there are a lot of amazing things about quantum physics, and here's my understanding of one of the basic concepts, and that is that the entire human perception of reality is basically an illusion, that everything we see around us and perceive as solid matter is instead almost completely empty space, and interspersed in this empty space is a matrix of vibrating energy fields, tiny fields of potentiality. And these vibrating fields aren't solid either, they pop in and out of existence, creating the vibration. And the entire universe is made of an almost infinite array of these vibrational fields. In fact, instead of viewing the universe as clumps of solid matter, a much better analogy is to consider that the universe is music. That's what music is, it's a harmonious resonance, and that's what creates the universe as well these resonating fields in a matrix within matter. Two and a half thousand years ago, Pythagoras was not only enlightened enough to know that the Earth was a sphere, even though our limited human perception at the time would have led us to believe that the Earth was flat, Pythagoras also knew that the universe was made of resonating energy. He called the universe the music of the spheres. And not only is the universe music, but our body is music as well. All matter is made of these harmoniously resonating energy fields. And our consciousness is enmeshed in the vibrational fields of our body, in the music of our body. I'm not just bringing this up as an interesting analogy, though, because if you can perceive that everything is a vast symphony of vibration, then you can consider that each molecule is like a musical instrument. Each molecule has a specific range of vibration depending on the number of protons, neutrons, and electron states within that molecule, just like each musical instrument has a specific range of octaves it's capable of producing. And these molecules are arranged in our bodies in an unimaginably complex orchestra to form the music which is us. We've been evolving this way for hundreds of millions of years, in part because we have consciousness. In a way, you could say that our consciousness has aided in the construction of the most complex symphony known. But just like the instruments in a regular orchestra, each molecule in our bodies is also tuned. And we're tuned by the larger fields of vibration that surround us. Now I know that last statement's hard for a lot of people to accept, especially if you were questioning the earlier analogies to begin with. So let me give you some examples of natural frequencies that we're attuned to. One is the circadian rhythm, the 24-hour cycle of the sun. Now, we don't tend to view this as a frequency because in our limited human perception 24 hours is a long time, but it is a natural frequency and we are clearly attuned to it. And if you take someone out of this natural frequency and put them under constant artificial light or constant darkness, they'll actually tend to lose their tuning and migrate onto something like a 30-hour wake and sleep cycle. Now I'm not saying that the circadian rhythm directly tunes every molecule in your body, but I believe the majority of them are indirectly attuned by it. For example, when you sleep and wake, it causes a physiological change in almost every system in your body, and so almost every molecule in your body is indirectly attuned by the circadian rhythm through other systems. In the same way that a tuning fork could be used to tune one instrument in an orchestra, and then that one tuned instrument can be used to tune the rest of the orchestra. And there are many other examples of natural frequencies that our bodies and our consciousness are attuned to. There's the frequency of the seasons, which causes many animals to hibernate or migrate. There's the lunar cycle, which many organisms are attuned to. Then there are much more subtle natural frequencies, which have only recently been discovered and which may impact our state of consciousness. One of these is the Schumann resonance. The so Schumann resonance is the natural electromagnetic frequency of the Earth's atmosphere, and the strongest note is around 8 hertz. Animals' brain waves are on a very similar frequency to the Schumann resonance, and one theory for this is that since animals evolved surrounded by this natural electromagnetic frequency, we incorporated it into our brain waves, much the same way that animal blood plasma is similar in chemical composition to seawater, in theory because animals evolved in seawater. And if we are attuned to the Schumann resonance, it would have a profound impact on our state of consciousness. It's impossible for someone to be in an agitated and highly focused state when they're in a theta brainwave state. It's impossible for someone to be calm and meditative when they're in a beta brainwave state. So this is one more example of a natural frequency which we may be attuned to and which could potentially have a profound impact on our state of consciousness. Another strong natural frequency which surrounds us but was only relatively recently discovered is the ocean of negative ions in the air we breathe. We've actually evolved to sense this difference in ionic state in the air. 
It's what we sense as fresh versus stagnant air. Negative ions are created by things like falling water droplets and wind friction so that air after a thunderstorm or near the surf feels very fresh, whereas air in an enclosed, stuffy room feels very stagnant. And likely we evolved to sense this difference in ionic state of the air because it has some impact on our health, but I believe that our consciousness is also attuned to this frequency, and I'll go into that in a minute. Another strong natural resonance which surrounds us and we never consider is sunlight itself. It has a frequency. And you'll notice when people are sad or depressed, what do they do? They enclose themselves in a small stuffy room and they draw the curtains. They've put themselves into a low light, low ion environment because I believe their consciousness is actually attuned to those frequencies. Just like they put on sad music because their consciousness is attuned to that particular frequency of music. And when people are happy, what do they do? They go out in the bright sunshine, near the surf, near a waterfall, somewhere that's a high ion, high light environment. Again, because their consciousness is attuned to those frequencies, just like their consciousness is attuned to the happy music they listen to when they're in a good mood. And there's no way to prove this connection, but hopefully it's a useful hypothesis for you to consider. Now, I could have just made a video saying, go outside in nature in the fresh air and sunshine and you'll feel different, you'll feel better, and everyone intuitively recognizes that that's true. But I wanted to point out just how fundamentally we are attuned to these natural frequencies and how they affect our state of consciousness and how we can lose our tuning, just like a musical instrument loses its tuning if we're taken out of these natural frequencies for long enough. Because once you understand the concept that your consciousness is attuned to these natural frequencies, you can become more aware of it, just like a musician who picks up an instrument and knows whether it's in tune or not. If someone's not a musician, they could pick up an instrument and have no idea whether it's in tune. But once you're more aware of this concept, you can recognize when you lose your natural tuning and the effect that that has on your state of consciousness. Now the types of natural resonance I talked about today are of course only the ones that have been discovered by science so far, some relatively recently. But I think it's likely that there are other types of natural resonance which haven't been discovered by science yet. In my opinion, a lot of ancient wisdom revolved around understanding these vibrations in the universe and how they affect our state of consciousness. But just as a general baseline, you will notice that when you're out in nature in a more natural energy environment, the one that we evolved in for hundreds of millions of years, you have a different state of consciousness than when you're indoors in an artificial environment. And by understanding that fundamental baseline, you can recognize when you're out of tune.